We didn't like mark that in the budget, David. Salmon lock, probably just as good as a New York. Huh? Oh my God, just ate part of the tissue. Kinda tastes like a Domino's. What's going on guys? We're back in Boston. All right, we're back in Boston for a quick trip. Shout out to the CSA at Northeastern University for bringing us out here, but we gotta do something that we have not done in Boston before actually which is a classic Boston food crawl. And we actually have a uh, reference now. We can compare it to New York City. I'm sure some things it's gonna do better, some things maybe not, but of course we have to start off with the iconic lobster roll. And this is an Atlantic lobster. The waters are colder. Uh, you know, th that means the oysters are fatty. You can get them prepared two ways, with mayo and celery, or you can get it with hot butter. Of course, it's kind of cold right now. We're like pretty much entering the winter right now. We had to go with hot butter. This is a highly ranked spot, Andrew. They're not playing around fifty dollars. Yo, you, you didn't, you didn't tell me that. We, that we didn't like mark that in the budget, David. <laughs> U.S. Oh, it does. Yeah. Mmm. The amount of lobster flavor versus even like a New York lobster roll, it's like three hundred percent. I'm not even gonna say about, you know, the butter and stuff like that is a little simplistic for me, but I'm telling you in terms of pure lobster vibe, that's the strongest lobster roll I ever had in my life. Um, growing up, Andrew, I would say the chowder was even more of a stereotypical Boston dish than the lobster roll. The yeah. lobster roll is more of like, a, you know, the last like 10, 20 years type thing. Yeah, but let's check out, man, they got real pieces of clam in there. That's what I really appreciate. And you got the little oyster crackers here. I have the uh, fried islip clams right here. Honestly. I think what they are, they're the bigger clams and they're chopped up in different ways. So that's why they look all stringy. But guys, we got the clam dishes right here. We out in Boston. Mm. You know what it is, man? It's that this, these dishes are really letting the seafood shine and that's what I appreciate. It kind of reminds me of even like Cantonese food, you know, how like the flavors are kind of light. It's not too spicy, but it really lets the, the seafood shine. Of course, last but not least, Andrew, I got one of every single oyster. You've got Island Creek, Rocky Nook, Riptide, Gildan Point, Unicorn, and Bose. Salil. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these are from Massachusetts and Maine, so you know it's really good. Comes from the cold waters. Hey, hey guys. Hey, cheers to Boston. And the CSU at Northeastern. <laughs> Dude, this is some of the best seafood I've ever had, to be honest. You know, coming from New York, a lot of French influence, I'm used to a lot more aiolis and creams and dressings. They really, really let the seafood shine on its own here. I think we also have to acknowledge, David, that this same quality in New York, I'm sure you can find it, it's probably more expensive. I got this crab avocado toast, guys. They were saying this is actually a newer item that sort of like entered the New England diet. So the toast is super crispy, a lot of butter. I'm excited. Hear this crunch. Picking up on this last a little bit too. Mm. Wow. A little taco vibe, a little lime on there. Oh, a little, uh, I would say Mexican chilies right there. A little claw meat, a little claw meat. Anna, you have an interesting opinion. You are about the claw meat. I would actually say that I think that's the bicep meat. Yo, it's one of my favorite dishes. This might've been the best thing. Whoa. I'm gonna go ahead and say my favorite dish was the crab avocado toast. Guys, sleeper. I gotta say, you know, a lot of people forget that Boston is actually more north than New York is. The water's being cold, makes the seafood good. So, man, shout out to Boston. This is a great first spot so far. You guys, next up is Saloniki. This is a Greek spot that is like sort of modernizing ultra authentic Greek street snacks. And uh, you are looking at some Luminakes. These are Greek donuts. I got baklava, I got Nutella, I got honey, I got cinnamon all on them right now. I have never had a Greek donut before. It was my very first time, only in Boston. Listen guys, it's almost like more of a mochi texture. It's very difficult to describe. It's way less dense. It's much more airy. I heard that Greek people make these at home and uh, the most common toppings are like Greek yogurt and cherries and stuff like that. But of course I had to go with the baklava, cinnamon, honey. <clears throat> hey. First time in Boston, first time having Illuminaki from Saloniki, good as Malacca. This is the first Illuminaki I've ever had in my life. Now, what I think is cool that they're trying to do is they're trying to like make Greek street food like a little bit more modernized. I'm sure they're trying to multiply these businesses and have them spread into different cities and, and you know, have it be a sustainable model. So I think that's really cool. Shout out to them. They are from Greece, so you know it's legit. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it's like 
a crispy pillow. Okay, it's very like squishy. If I have to pick one up with my fingers, let me just look at that. Beep, 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 beep. It feels like Kirby, like you know, like a fluffy kind of pillowy. I don't want to say marshmallow, but it's definitely like you know, it still has that cut those little air pockets on the inside. Oh man, way better than a regular donut hole. I'm rocking with this. It's so good. Ooh, Naki. Definitely in Greek street food you should try. I'm so glad. And I don't know if I was ever gonna have it if I didn't come to Boston. Listen guys, Lady M Cakes were started in the Upper West Side by a Japanese American lady or a, a Japanese lady who lives in America. But when I see it in Boston, we gotta get it. All right, you guys, you have the matcha, you have the purple yam, but it is, uh, I've never seen the pumpkin brulee one, and that's definitely gotta be for fall, so that's what I'm going with. Listen, guys, we are looking at a pumpkin cream, pumpkin spice hybrid 27 layer Lady M crepe cake. Like we said, we could have got matcha, you know, as an ode, but uh, this is the seasonal flavor, and you know, pumpkin spice, everything is in right now for the fall, so. Once you let, you know, all the layers of the pumpkin sink in, is fire but at first i really wasn't too into it but ultimately this is good if you like squash kind of tastes like kombucha i gotta say it's sunday here in boston it's very peaceful i'm just feeling very free right now i'm just gonna pick up this piece of the lady m i don't care this is not how lady m intended her cakes to be eaten i understand i'm sorry lady m but uh so it does not taste like a pumpkin pie it does not taste like a pumpkin spice. It actually tastes like actual pumpkin, like real pumpkin is in there. I can almost taste like the fibers of the squash. It's actually kind of good. Um, sorry, that looks weird, but not bad. And I'm glad I had it in Boston. All right, you guys, we have to try Boston bagels. Uh, apparently they're very round, very fluffy. You got some really good height on this. This is their version of a bacon, egg, and cheese. Gonna put a little bit of ketchup on it. I got some aioli. Yo, can you press down on the bagel? Show, show the cream. Oh my goodness. Show Look, the that's a thick midsole, guys. Put the hot sauce. I don't even know what hot sauce that is. It looks like mustard. Here we go. Boston bacon, egg, and cheese. You guys, it's very difficult to describe. The Boston bagels are almost like brioche mixed with bagels. Definitely not that chewy, dense New York vibe. You're looking at a everything Boston bagel, salmon locks in there, extra capers, tomato, onion. Let's take a look, man. It almost looks like we're looking at something different. Just, just, just look at the, just the bread compression. Listen, guys, do not crucify me. I came up with my conclusion. This salmon lox in Boston is probably just as good as a New York one because the bagel is a lot more like brioche. It's actually a lot easier to bite through. Sometimes, especially in New York, you can get the Montreal style. It's just way too chewy. The whole thing falls apart. The salmon starts getting squeezed with the tomato and then it just like separates and just goes everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a 4.5 out of five, but this bacon, egg and cheese, I'm not gonna lie. Boston, it's a little bogus. Give it 2.5 out of five. I think that the tomato and salmon are able to stay within there because maybe there's not too much, but also it kind of gets squished in the middle of the bagel. So that, that kind of helps. It kind of seals it like this, but mm, everything bagel smells really good. Mmm. For me, personally, I like this bagel a lot. Nice crust a little bit of that baked burnt flavor along with the burnt little seeds and, and seasoning. Mmm. This one was good. Boston locks. Of course, guys, no trip to Boston would be complete without a trip to Boston's Chinatown. There's always old stuff closing up, new stuff coming in. We are at Cafe Dark right now, D-A-R-Q, and uh, we are looking at coconut ice cream served inside of a coconut shell they get this from Asia. This is actually a popular drink, I believe, in Taiwan. So here we go, like real coconut shell, guys. What the? This coconut ice cream is good. A little sweet, but man, I'm telling you, in terms of in-depth, deep coconut natural flavor, I mean, look, guys, serving it in the shell. 
All right, everybody, so we're here at Corner Bakery right over on Harrison and Beach in Chinatown. And I got to say, shout out to them for having this wide array of moon cakes. You have green tea, winter melon cake, you have pineapple moon cakes. You have all these different new moon cakes, you know, because it's not just the lotus leaf paste with the egg yolk, imperial treasure red bean cake. Small pandan moon cake. I'm pretty sure there's a moon cake. I'm assuming small pandan. I kind of want to try it to, to because pandan is just trendy. But you know what? It just goes to show you like even Boston's Chinatown. We always spoke highly of it and not to disappoint. Hi, my name is Dr. Doe. I'm Fung Bro's friend and we're at Great Taste Bakery. Um, so right here we have a curry bun. So I'm going to try this. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you so much. She heated it up for me because this is what I wanted. Okay. So that's, oh my God, just ate part of the tissue. That's fine, still tastes good. It's really done, so I'm gonna just pick out some of the curry. Mmm, the curry part's good. Nice and sweet. I'm eating tissue right now. The pineapple shaped one, I'm going to peel off the back so I don't do this again. I'm gonna, yeah. Oh my gosh, these are just flaking everywhere, but I'm so excited to eat this. Mmm. Nice and sweet and crispy on the outside, and the inside's nice and flavorful. Filled with meat, which I always need my protein, so this is key. This is another pork bakery bun. Mmm. I'm excited for this one too. That one's actually my favorite. So this is a zongzi, a rice wrap. Um, they ran out of the peanut ones, which I'm really sad about. So this one has green beans. Don't know what that means, but I've actually never tried one of these before. So I'm excited to see what is inside. Because it's like five pounds. <gasps> Ooh, that's nice. Okay, I can see why she gave me a fork. Ask the aunties to heat it up for you. I think that's key. What's in there? Got pork, green beans. Mm, that was good. Yeah, Chinatown has some great stuff around here. Much cleaner than New York. <laughs> All right, guys, we're here at AT O'Keefe's. This is a Irish pub uh, that's kind of modernized, but you know, trying to keep it traditional in the sense of being an Irish pub. And they have this dish called Irish curry. Now, if you guys don't know, curry is very big in the UK, in Britain as well, of course. But this is their own type of curry. It's a little bit toned down. It's uh, chicken based, and it got really popular in the 1980s. So yes, Ireland is eating curry, and this is buttered rice. So these are little chicken tenders. So I would expect the curry not to be super spicy, like I said, but let me try this first. Yeah, it's like a mild curry. Kind of actually tastes like a, almost like a Hong Kong curry. Mmm. For people who are not big spice eaters, this is gonna be a good enough level. It has enough of the aroma, enough of the spice, a slight little pepper kick in the back, but it's really not too crazy. Mmm. So yes, on the menu, they did have a shepherd's pie. They did have a Reuben sandwich. They did have the potatoes and they had the bangers and mash. But, you know, there's such a Indian, South Asian influence in the British Isles that I had to try the Irish curry because I'd never had Irish curry before. Think about it. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Irish, Irish curry. Yeah, you don't know what that is, but actually it's pretty good. It's light, mild, chickeny. But if you don't think the Irish curry is spicy enough for you, yeah, if it's not spicy enough, then why don't you try some smala? Smala on Irish curry. Let's check it out. It kicks it up a notch to the point that I like. I might have to say that the Irish pubs in Boston, in the city center, are maybe better than the ones in New York. I mean, they have a lot of great food. They have a deep Irish tradition out here. Bill Burr, Conan O'Brien, Mark Wahlberg, all the great Irish guys. This guy who took my order, he's from Dublin. So, you know, shout out, Irish curry. Check it out. Dr. Doe checking back in. We are at Jean's Flatbread. So this is a lamb flatbread and it's nice and toasty. And this is the pork flatbread. It's a very Xi'an styled type um, sandwich. So I'm gonna try this one first. Excited. Ooh. 
Mmm. I like the lamb. I really normally don't like eating lamb. So I'm gonna put small on because whatever you guys made is amazing. Always need to cook. That's perfect. I'm gonna do the pork now. <laughs> Looks nice and juicy. I'm gonna put small love right on it because I know I'm gonna like it that way. The pork is really good. I don't know which one I like better, but they're both really good. So with me, you know I like my protein like before and it needs a kick, so make sure you get your small off and check this place out. All right, we're here at Flower Cafe over on Dalton Street, and this might be the best banana bread I've ever had in my life. They warm it up for you. They also got a really good cinnamon roll. But guys, I wanted to get a banana bread because obviously this is something that I really would not pay $5 for elsewhere, but I'm paying $5 in Boston because this might just be best. I think that is the best banana bread I ever had. It's super moist, super warm. Oh man, I know that's a basic item, but like, I feel like Boston is gonna present a better banana bread than maybe even New York. Here I have a cinnamon roll. They warm it up for you. It's nice and soft. As you can see, the frosting, when it melts, it gets a little bit more translucent. But let me just show you how gooey this thing is. Cinnamon roll. That's actually better than like any sort of Cinnabon or cinnamon roll I've ever had, to be honest. The cinnamon roll is not something I go out and seek in New York City, but this is super good. I think Boston does stuff like this amazing. So I would say flower cafe, cinnamon roll and banana bread, basic items, but they're delicious. So the reason we're in Boston is because we're doing a show for the CSA at Northeastern. I'm gonna be giving away some of these Japanese Royce chocolates today uh, at the show. You guys know anything about Royce chocolates? It is the largest international chocolate chain from Japan. You know, Japan, they took a lot of Western Americana things like whiskey and jeans and stuff like that, and they got really into it. This is what I am uh, giving away today, the Royce matcha chocolate, very Japanese. Orange mouth cacao with no liquor, Darjeeling, uh, which is black tea with lemon, matcha, white chocolate, and then white chocolate. I'll try the Darjeeling. Yeah. I'll try the Darjeeling. Karen, 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 do you want to try one? Yeah, I don't know. We could do the most popular. Okay. Listen, guys, most we are popular? trying some of the different Royce okay. chocolates. They're busting it out like we're at Louis Vuitton, like we're at Yves Saint Laurent. We got the white glove treatment thing. <laughs> so this is the most popular place. Yes. Most of them. Oh my gosh. Aren't you guys, you are looking at a champagne Royce chocolate. These have to be refrigerated because they're almost like fromage, cheese. Cheers. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. Darjeeling black tea chocolate. Mm. Exquisite, magnificent, nuanced, layered. Yeah. You know what it actually tastes like? I gotta say, it tastes like similar, but way, way better than those Meiji chocolates that I get in the tube. Oh, that I see. I yeah, I know what you mean. It's better, it's better. I'm not <laughs> saying it's the tubey Meiji chocolate, but that's, that's it kind of, that's vibe. the Japanese chocolate vibe. So it is, it is. <laughs> Matcha, chocolate. How much more can we do? Cheers. Itadakimasu. <laughs> <laughs> no, it definitely tastes like the Japanese chocolates you grew up eating at the grocery store, but just like way more decadent. All right, so right across from this band that's setting up right here, we are in front of a only one year old pizza spot, but is already being dubbed Boston's favorite pizza. Union Park Pizza, we're gonna go check it out. See how it matches up to New York style pizza. All right, this is Boston's best pizza, according to the owner and according to a lot of people who have reviewed it, guys. So I got three slices out of the four. I got your regular pap, your buffalo chicken, and then your vegan slice. Here we go. And then also, I think it's funny they have sriracha here. So they modeled it after Brooklyn style pizza. Obviously the pepperoni are a little bit different. These are the really big flat kind, the ones that we're kind of like used to seeing from back in the day. Uh, New York might be a little bit more of the thick cup style, but anyways, let's just try it. Folds nice. Got the little uh, grain on the bottom. Flowers imported from Italy. Union City Pizza. Mm. Little sriracha. 
Boston, don't get mad at me. It's pretty good. Kinda tastes like a Domino's. Buffalo Chicken Ranch. Um, this is um, a slice that you can get at slice spots in New York City. None of the traditional spots, but you know, the kind of like tersey spots, you can get this. But this is a more artisanal version. Lots of ranch on top or whatever sauce that is. This trumps other buffalo ranches. This is a good buffalo ranch. This, the pep is not better than peps in New York. Almost any of the slices I would say. Any of the top 10 slices in New York, this one doesn't match up. But this one matches up. So, Boston's doing the buffalo chicken one really well. Wow. Vegan slice, looks pretty good. Probably vegan uh, ricotta cheese or goat cheese or whatever that's supposed to be. For me personally, I'm not a fan of having all the flour and the grain at the bottom. That's just not my style. I like it clean on the bottom, but overall, yeah. I would say recommend, I recommend definitely getting the buffalo chicken here at Union City. Um, pretty good. Well, straight up, this is one of the best Buffalo chicken ranch pizzas I ever had in my life. My God. Like we said, you know, the traditional flavors, New York got it easy. But for these non-traditional ones that New York doesn't take serious, let me tell you this, Boston, they taking it serious. Like we said, man, Boston is such a crazy town because it's like we're in the middle of New England right now. I can see why they call it New England because it feels like we're in England. But you can also get some uh, tahini on some fruits. And you're what's the call uh, I'm going to. I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Floridians know. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Alright, you guys, we are uh, taking a look at fresh mangoes right here. Here we go. You would not expect to find some mangoes out here on the streets of Boston, but I'm telling you, my man from Puebla is cooking at A1. Let's go! Garnering over 500 million views on topics such as basketball, sneakers. They tackle like really tough Asian burger topics and also have a com comedy show in New York City. Just released a hot sauce. Dude, we did do that. Yeah! <laughs> Aren't you guys, that ends a quick 30 hours in Boston. Shout out to ne Northeastern University, but we gotta end it the same way we came in with some Boston local seafood in Boston. All right, we're here at Legal Seafood at the Boston Logan Airport here. We have this $27 crab cake i'm not gonna lie that's pretty expensive but i'm excited to try it Ooh. just peep the crab real crab um here we have the fisherman's plate but we got an angry style meaning that it has cajun seasoning and that's white fish this is white whiting fish okay and then you got shrimp and then you got some squid here and then you got the fries these fries look incredible all right so legal seafoods is kind of like a uh, local boston institution but a lot of locals might be like oh i'm not gonna go there but of course tourists Totally passable to me. Yeah, I mean, I heard it's good in the city, but they have a location in the airport. Here you got oysters. Uh, it's their daily oysters, $4, gonna be fresh. And then of course the Boston cream slice. So I guess, uh, David, what do you want to start off? We gotta go with the $27 crab cake, guys. Oh my goodness. Hold on, show uh, the I camera. The seafood is definitely very good in Boston. Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily cheap at all. Though. All right. Guys, I, I also have smala, so I'm gonna try it with smala after I eat it by itself. Crab cake. <laughs> I'm gonna try it with Smala though. Let's kick it up. Alright, guys, moving on to the fisherman's platter. Of course, you know, I'm going with the fries first. Of course, I'm gonna go with the fish first. Mm. If you know, uh, if you guys know about whiting fish, it is a cheaper cut of fish, but it's still pretty good. A lot of like, uh, you know, hood spots, they got whiting. <laughs> oh, let me get a little shrimp. I gotta try it on a shrimp. Oh, look at this fatty guy right here. See that? And that's a uh, naked fried. That means there's no batter on there. Mmm. No. I'm not gonna lie, this plate was really strong, man. If you are a local Bostonian, let us know what you think about legal seafoods in the comment section below. All right. When the shrimp is that fried, just eat the whole thing. With the smell bar? Man, hold up. I think that platter is worth it. It's worth it. I believe that these are called like uh, 
wild free oysters or something like that. You know, oysters have so many different names and, uh, you know, different local special flavors that they're known for. I like a little bit of horseradish and a little bit of ta ta and a little bit of the garlics on my yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> to Boston. Good. Yo, considering we're at the airport, I mean, is that one of the best airport oysters I've ever had? You had to end off with a nice Boston cream here. I'm just gonna eat it right now, let's go. So uh, I believe the Boston cream pie was originally a donut, but they converted it into a cake, so. Oh. Man, this one looks juicy, I'm not gonna lie, man. Oh, and by the way, guys, Dunkin' Donuts is from Boston. Nah, this hits. That's good. These two winners here at the airport, guys, I gotta say, this trip, I feel like I really got to see like Newberry Street a lot. We saw different parts of Boston that we hadn't been to before. So I thought it was like a good trip. Very chill. The weather was great. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, Boston food. Listen, oh, guys, if you want to bring us out to your local university and have us speak, we'll do a food crawl where you guys are at. Shout out to the CSA at Northeaster. All right, guys. And until next time, we out. Peace.